So you've seen way too many optimization and deep bloat guides by now, right? So here's another one. Hopefully, this one covers all the bases for you. This guide will be broken into two parts, a sequential numerical part, which is to deep bloat or clean up your Windows system, and then a second alphabetical part, which is more of an overview for various ways to optimize and improve the experience on your ROG Ally or Windows handheld. Also a little different from the other guides on this channel is there will be some options, mostly in the second part of the video, so check the timestamps in the description below. And as usual, pause if you need to, because we're going to go quick. So here's what you need, your ROG Ally or Windows device. That's it, let's get cooking. Step 1. Go to www.google.com and search for Bloaty Nosy, or click the link in the description below. Once on the GitHub page, scroll down to where it says Download, and then click the GitHub Releases page. As of this video, the latest version is 0.85, but always check to see that latest text next to the release. Then scroll down a bit to find the bloaty nosy setup.msi. Click it to download and save it to a location that you can find easily. Step 2. Open that .msi file you just downloaded. Click next a bunch of times to install it, then click close. After that, click the Windows search bar and type in bloaty, then open the bloaty nosy app. Step 3. Now that the app is open, you can choose to use the assistant on the left side and click through it, which has numerous explanations on the different things it'll clean up. Do be picky about what you're going to remove here, as it's quite possible to break certain functions in Windows, if you're not careful. For instance though, I'm removing Zune, cause only Star-Lord uses a Zune. If you'd rather do it the lazy man's way, just click Analyze and then click Fix when it's done. Do note here that Armory Crate's record function may break as a result as it did for me. Once you've clicked fix, a pop-up will show up and then ask you to accept. Hit Y on your keyboard and hit enter. Then you're done with Bloaty Nosy, unless again you want to install more things manually. Step 4. Go to www.glarysoft.com or check the link in the description. Then click free download. Save that file to a location you're comfortable with. Step 5. Open the setup file you just downloaded and click next, I agree, and then click through the installer to install Glary Utilities. It should automatically open at the end. If not, search in Windows search bar for Glary and then open it. Once Glary is open, click the one click maintenance text that's on that screen. You can choose to click and scan everything or nothing. I recommend you click at least the following, registry cleaner, shortcuts fixer, and startup manager. After you've made your selection, click scan for issues. Once it finishes scanning, click repair issues to fix the issues. Note that you might be prompted to close your browser if it's open. Step six, once that's done, you can click advanced tools and then click through each to optimize your system even further. For instance, I'm going to click Optimize and Improve, then click Startup Manager. I'll then disable this Send to OneNote thing because OneNote can go to hell. As with Bloaty Nosy, if you're unsure of anything, don't disable or uninstall it. Either leave a comment below where someone can help or look it up on Google to make sure it's not something that will give you constant errors or break some functionality. So in this Advanced Tools section, you can also go as hard or as soft as you want. I know, I know, that's what she said. Step seven, I recommend now clicking on the menu on the right side and then choosing settings. Here, I recommend unchecking load Glary utilities automatically on Windows Startup because we obviously don't want more programs running on Startup. Just periodically run Glary to clean up whatever unmentionables you might have downloaded. Step eight, this next step is optional but recommended for your gaming handhelds. One thing to note here is that it does technically make your device more vulnerable to attacks, but I'm going to assume that you're not going to be trading your Dogecoin on your ally. So click the Windows search and then type Core Isolation. Click off the switches here and then on to the next step. Step 9. This one is also optional and actually an alternative to Glary, but I still recommend running Glary for the first time. After that though, if you choose to uninstall Glary or not use it anymore, this program might help you to easily manage things like Windows updates adding removing programs, and whatnot, without having to wade through the wasteland that is the Windows control panel. So enough yapping, let's get it. Google Microsoft PC Manager or click the link in the description. For this one, you'll want to download it from TechSpot as the official Microsoft link is out of date. Nice one, Bill. Click download and then save it to a place you're comfortable with. Step 10. Open the setup file and install it, then click launch now. On the home screen, now you can click through the health check, processes, as well as deep clean and startup. The primary difference you might see here between PC Manager and Glary is that Glary might do a lot more, but this looks a lot cleaner. I also like the ease of use of this for a handheld because you can easily click through storage for instance and then pull up large files in a list and then delete them with just a couple of clicks rather than digging through all those system folders. Now you can delete files securely through Glary, but it's just not as simple or straightforward as PC Manager. Okay, next part. 
Part two. This part of the guide will be a little bit slower as not every step is mandatory or even recommended. Do check the description and the timestamps for more information. So now we're on to handheld specific steps to optimize and streamline your experience. Step A. The first is Handheld Companion. Do note that this program is primarily an alternative to the next utility that I'll mention in Step C. So if you don't want Handheld Companion, skip ahead to that, as some users have reported controller issues with Handheld Companion in some games. But if you're all in for Handheld Companion, find this by googling Handheld Companion or clicking the link in the description. Check the GitHub page, scroll down, and click Download Latest, and then download that.exe. Step B. With this tool, you can do things like set the frame rate limit, set hotkeys, as well as use auto TDP, which some people don't like, but should work quite nicely with the ROG Allies VRR or FreeSync panel. Anyway, I like Handheld Companion because installing it also includes RTSS and hardware info, which adds a nice overlay that displays some details that the Allies overlay doesn't have, or some other Windows handhelds don't have at all. In many cases though, Handheld Companion either replaces or complements the manufacturer's software, like AOK Zoe or One X Player's Player Console. The biggest advantage of Handheld Companion, in my opinion, is that it has game-specific profiles, which you can set by clicking a button like this, and then once you're comfortable with those settings, you don't have to mess with it again. If you'd like a more detailed guide on how Handheld Companion works, leave me a comment below. Step C. The alternative is Universal x86 Tuning Utility, specifically the handheld version. To install, click the link in the description or Google Universal x86 Handheld. Once on that page, click Download Latest, and then on that page, click Windows Download under the Download section. As of this video, it's in Beta 8. Then all you need to do is run that app. Once it's installed, it should show up automatically, but to call and to dismiss it, you'll hit left bumper, right bumper, and up. I like this utility for how simple it is to use and the controller input works very nicely. It has some similar functions to Handheld Companion, but I've not run into any controller compatibility issues. Do note that for this utility, it's very possible to soft brick your device if you try to go ham on the GPU overclock. So if you're not sure of your ally's default clocks or whatnot, leave a comment or search online. What's great about this app is that you can also park cores, or at least I think it's parking cores, which can save some battery life with less demanding games. You can also set a range for the RTSS frame limit, as well as what looks like some pseudo auto TDP. Do note though that this utility doesn't have a per game profile like Handheld Companion has, nor does it have any overlay from what I can tell. Fortunately, the Ally does ship with one stock. Step D. This one is for the Ally specifically and not one I personally use, but many people do recommend it. It's G Helper. To get G-Helper, simply click the link in the description below or Google G-Helper. Go to the GitHub page, scroll down a bit to where you see download and then save that zip file. You'll have to unzip it into a separate folder, but after you do that, just run the .exe to get started. The advantage for using this app on the Ally is the ability to really customize fan curves and access some things that Armory Crate doesn't do very well. Or you can do those things without jumping through all those screens you normally would. I don't think this is a replacement for Armory Crate, as many Ally users use this in tandem with Armory Crate SE. I don't use this personally as I already use x86 tuning utility and Armory Crate. Those two apps are enough for me and it would kind of defeat the purpose of debloating the device with all these other apps loaded. Step E. This one's another utility best suited for the Ally, but it also works nicely for other Windows handhelds. It's Custom Resolution Utility or Crew. For the Ally, this app can increase the range for FreeSync or VRR meaning you should see less screen tearing and you can get a smoother experience when frame rates drop. Here's how to get it. Google Custom Resolution Utility or click the link in the description. On that monitortest.com page, you'll see some text that says download and a zip file. To helper, you'll have to unzip that file into a separate place, but once you do, just run the crew.exe. After that, you can set some custom resolutions to your liking. For the Ally specifically, to increase the range of FreeSync, click the edit button next to the display, then change the value next to V-Range. Most people would agree you don't need to go under 30, which means 30 FPS, but I like to go a little bit under for moments when frame rates do dip below 30. So to overcompensate, I put a little below that. And for this video, I'll show you that I put it as 20. Some people have even gone as low as one. If you do run into any black screens, flickering, or strange behavior on your display, it's possible that it didn't take the setting well. So try to change it again, maybe to a number which is not so low or aggressive. Step F. F is right, because the last one is just for the ally. In order to improve performance and reduce some stuttering, you may want to modify the VRAM. To do this, enter Armory Crate Command Center, that button on the right side, then clicking Operating Mode, then GPU, 
and setting the VRAM to what you like. I think the general consensus right now seems to be around 6 or 7 gigabytes of VRAM, simply because 8 gigabytes will starve Windows of system memory. But if you know you'll be running less demanding games, you can probably get away with 4 or 5 gigabytes. Why not auto you might ask? It doesn't seem to work as efficiently as manually setting the amount, and sometimes will result in pretty big performance losses, at least for some users, when you set it to auto. And now for some bonus tips. That first one is the Ally Hotkeys video. ROG Global shared this one on their YouTube page, and they go over a bunch of very useful hotkeys, which you can check out to familiarize yourself with the various hotkeys. But if you can't be bothered, you can also just hold the command setter key, and then it'll show you the shortcuts as well. Why didn't he lead with that? And yeah, I lied, there's one more bonus app. So this bonus app is a work in progress, and by the time you see this video, it might actually be fully working for the Ally. As of this recording, however, it's unfortunately not working, with the Ally, so its primary use is with other Windows handhelds. The app is Project SBC's Handheld Control Panel. I actually really like this app and I've used it countless times on the One X Player 2. Similar to Handheld Companion and X86 Utility, you can control TDP, cap frame rates, and monitor stats, but the extra special sauce is the ability to launch games and apps from the program as well. While the former utilities are working on implementing launchers, the ability to launch Playnight from Handheld Control Panel is since, as you know, there are some guides on this channel to implement emulated games into Playnite. Check the link in the description for the link to Handheld Control Panel. And that's it. Now you're done. Did I miss any apps or optimization steps? Leave me a comment or fight me in one below. While you're at it, why not check out one of these guides right now? GG.